Good evening. This is your hour of wellness with the Auspicious Wellness Optimal Wellness Podcast. This is your experience in wellness. My name is Deborah Smith Torrance, your host. I am a certified life and health coach, a manufacturing cannabinoid molecules, supplementations, and micronutrients. I invite you into our creative of wellness with Auspicious Wellness broadcasting live and in studio. You know what we do. We do not do ordinary, but we certainly, absolutely endeavor to bring you an extraordinary and informative session. I want to provide you with tangible and well-researched evidence-based information. We are broadcasting on the following podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, a oh, whole Yes, and also a lot more of them as well, not just Spotify. Also, we're broadcasting live on Google Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Odyssey, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Alexa, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, Deezer, Listen Note, Podbean, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Castro, Castbox. Oh boy, Podbean, Spreaker, Player FM, and FFM, PG, and YouTube Podcasts. Good morning. I'm going to say it. I'm going to repeat it. Good afternoon and good evening again, wherever you are in the nation, on the globe, in the world. I just want to greet you properly, depending upon where in the world you are. <laughs> I'm so grateful also for the international support, I must say. Today's segment is going to be about healthy weight loss and your mindset for healthy weight loss. We're going to get started with the body's foundation. When we finish with the foundational body work, we're going to go to the science of the body and weight loss. When we finish that part of the segment, we're going to go to part three. And part three is going to be the rewiring of your mind, your mindset, your new mindset leading to habit change. And this is going to be a really great segment. I went over and over and over, taking things out, putting things back in that I wanted to talk about. So I really, really want to get down to the meat and the bones of this thing to help people have a better understanding. The foundational stuff, you've probably heard it, most of it. But then when we get into the science, That's a whole new thing. And then we give you the tools in your toolbox to be able to rewire your mindset and become actionable, leading to habit change. That's when it gets good. So bear with me. You ready to get started? So let's get into it. But first of all, I want to say welcome back to our weight loss series of Auspicious Wellness and the newly launched Auspicious Essentials, our fat burners. <laughs> yes, we do have a fat burner product line. It's auspiciousessentials.life. That's how you find them. So, and I'll take you into that probably a little bit later. But for right now, let's get started with some facts. We want to talk about why people gain weight. But by the time I'm done with this segment, I'm not only going to identify what causes our bodies to be overweight, but like I said, more importantly, tools for your toolbox, not just any tools, but positive, thought-provoking habit change, which allows you to identify and rewire your brain, identifying positive human behaviors, modified behaviors leading to changing how you process your thoughts and actions how you think, and connecting to an actionable tax, securing and providing the information that you desperately need for positive outcomes. You feel me? You feel what I'm talking about? <laughs> yes. Let's get moving. Let's go on. Now it's time to dig in and get started in a truly meaningful and intentional way by identifying strategies. So let's go on this journey. This journey, by the way, it's your choice. It's a new skill set of learning how to trust your choices, trust yourself with a healthy lifestyle change, and commitment with accountability to self. I said it, 
accountability to yourself, creating a deeper belief and trusting in yourself because why it all starts with you and it ends with you. It's your choice. You're in control. Tell yourself as of today, I'm in control. Your guiding principles, the most important person to draw to trust is yourself. The first step is to put your trust in yourself. Depend on your ability to identify and act with a sense of urgency about yourself. You have got to believe in self. You've got to believe in yourself. Nobody else needs to come along and give you information about yourself better than you can. Only if you're a narcissist, then that's a little bit different. But you don't need anyone to validate you. You've got to validate yourself deep inside because if you don't, it's going to lead to self-loathing. You've got to believe in yourself and you again. And I keep saying it. Are you ready to get into it? So I just want you to say as of today, my guiding principle is going to have confidence and belief in myself. That's where it all gets started at. It's the mindset that I am, I can, and I will. That's the mindset. So let's really get to it. We're going to get into it. The first part I want to talk about is genetics. I want you to understand this before we get started with weight loss. This is a personal journey. And what works on one person, it may not work on the next person. It's important to create a balanced and sustainable plan that includes a healthy diet and regular physical activity. The amount of muscle versus fat in a person's body depend on several factors and most importantly, genetics. And the reason why I'm saying that is because you know how some people say, oh, I want to look like this person. I want to look like that person. I'm starstruck. I want to look like this person. Well, you might not have the ge- genetic the, the genetic makeup to be able to look like that person. I'm going to get into it a little deeper. Genetics. Some people are genetically predisposed to have more muscle mass or store more fat. So that's like me saying, I'm every bit of a 12 to a 14. That's like me saying, oh, I want to be a size 8 or 4 or 2. That's never going to happen. I'm going to look sick. I'm going to be sick. It's never going to happen. And so while we are speaking on genetics, I want to share this with you because some people don't understand the reason why I'm this way is because I have a lot of muscle in my body. So I'm, I'm more thicker because I have a lot of muscle and I'm not meant to be small. Some people just want to be small, but everybody's not meant to be small. And you have to learn the body, learn to love the body that you're in. You do, you have to do that. Okay. I want to share something with you. A pound is a pound all day long. A pound is a pound, right? But actually, a pound of muscle, it weighs the same as a pound of fat. And I know what you're saying. What the heck is she talking about? <laughs> I'm going to break it down. A pound of muscle, think about what I'm saying, weighs the same as a pound of fat. They both weigh a pound, right? The difference lies in the densities. Muscles are denser and take up less space than fat. I want you to think about it like this. Muscle is going up and down. And fat is going wide. Okay. So a person that carries more fat has more volume to their body. They're going to take up more space because muscles are dense and they take up less space than fat. This is why a person with more muscle mass might weigh more than someone of the same size or the same weight, but who has a higher percentage of body fat. That person that has a higher percentage of body fat is going to automatically look bigger than the person that has more muscles. Unless you're this big old weight trainer or something like that, a weight lifter. But I'm talking about everyday people. Muscles have a leaner appearance due to its high density, while fat takes up more space. It takes up more volume in the body. So always remember that you have to understand genetically what you're predisposed, what is your body type. That is very important. Then if you understand your body type, then you can work from there and you can work with that. And you're not going to have blinders on to feel like, I want to look like this person when it's not even possible. You've got to learn to love who you are, the body that you're in, the skin you're in, and be positive 
with the love that you have for yourself. Now, let's get to the next thing, diet, the foods you eat. And I know most of you know this, but when I get into science, I don't expect all of you to know that. And that's the real good part of it. The food you eat generally and greatly influences your body's composition. Diets high in protein and complex carbohydrates can help build and maintain muscle mass. That's like, you know, we've gotten into high protein foods. We're also going to be getting into that more with our app. Our app that is coming out, the app is for measuring intake water, food, steps, also meal plans, low carbs, vegan, vegetarian, high protein, different meal plans. And we have those dependent upon a person's lifestyle. That's all going to be coming part of the app. We are building things in a way we've never done before, but we're moving forward. And that's the good thing because I don't know many of you know that we suffered a fire in November. So we were away for six months and that's why you didn't hear from me for such a long time and trying to build everything back and put it back the way it was is a job within itself, but we're up for it. I always talk about um, in the face of adversity. Well, this has been very hard, but I had to get up and I had to get it done. So I'm so happy to announce that we're back with you live and in living color, our TV show, our uh, new weight loss fat burner program as well, Auspicious Essentials Dot Life, Auspicious Wellness, <laughs> our supplementation and CBD infused product line as well. Uh, that's auspiciouswellness.com and the podcast and all the other stuff that we do, the TV show, all of those different things. We're back live and in living color. And boy, do we have some stuff for you this season. So let me get back into this thing. (laughs) I'm jumping all over the place. So I want to go back to something that I was saying earlier. So the diets, back to where we were when I was announcing the foods, but diets and high protein and complex carbohydrates, those are very good. good, I'm not even going to say diet. I'm going to say meal plans. Because when you say diet, it already feels restricted. So I'm not going to even say diets. I'm going to say meal plans because that's what we have, our meal plans. Because meal plans change you for life. They change how you process food, how you prepare food, what your food intake is. And then it becomes a lifestyle change. And that's where I'm trying to rewire your brain to. And not be where in restrictive diets where you're automatically setting yourself up to fail because they're too restrictive to keep up with. And a lot of times when people are on diets, they're not eating the proper foods. They're just having less intake. And it's not really giving you the nutrients and the amino acids and the essential vitamins that your body needs on a daily basis for your neurotransmitters to speak to your hormones. And then the hormones tell your body what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And then from there, the hormones help, not all of them, just some of them, help feed into the mitochondria, which is your body's fat burning process, where it takes fat and it takes it and turns it into energy instead of the fat being stored in your cells. That's a whole nother show. But if you go listen to the show before this one, before the fire, I broke all that down. So a lot of things I'm saying today, I'm going to refer you to a different show. So you got to go listen to everything. I got quite a few surprises for you anyway today. So anyway, let's get to our next one. Physical activity, regular. And I didn't just say regular old physical activity. I said, listen to me, regular strength training exercises can help build muscle Why sedentary, that's like sitting around all the time, lifestyle can lead to increased fat storage because you're not moving. So you're storing fat. And the other thing that I also want to tell you is when you get into, it could be low bearing strength training. When you get into that, that helps with arthritis. It helps to keep the muscles going and strengthening the muscles. We have to do this, even if it's just going for walks, even if you're a senior and you're, you're, even if you're a senior move around, don't sit, don't be still, don't just sit there, do the best you can to be able to keep your muscles, lean muscles going. And so that you don't start losing lean muscle and developing a lot of fat. Because as people age, muscle mass tends to decrease and fat storage may increase. This is due to hormonal changes and a decrease in physical activity. So we know you're going to have hormonal changes. And now, so we got some stuff in store for that. We've got something 
called Cynogenesis. And our Cynogenesis product, it literally has amino acids, the essentials, and the essential vitamins, the Bs, the Cs, the Ds, complexes that you actually need. They're all built in in one. So if you had to go to the store and buy all these different vitamins, you'd probably be out of three, four $400, but they're all in one. And that's what really, really makes it good. And I'm going to get to that. We're, we're getting there. Trust and believe me, I'm not just talking to you. I'm being also proactive with what I'm saying to you in an answer. (laughs) So hormonal balance. Hormones play a significant role in regulating muscle mass and fat storage. Variation in hormones like testosterone, the growth hormone, insulin, and cortisol can influence muscle and fat distribution. You ever notice when somebody is a diabetic and they get really sick, they get really lean and really thin, and they lose a lot of muscle? Well, that's because of a lot of the things that we lose when you get sick. And so what I'm talking in the place that I'm talking to you from is a place of prevention. And that's really, really where I want to hit home with you, giving you the tools to help you with prevention, to help you be as proactive as possible in your process. Also, the metabolic rate. People with a higher metabolic rate burn more calories at rest which can help maintain a lower body fat percentage. Like when people go to the gym and work out and then they come home and eat, well, they actually burn their body is their metabolism is still going. So at that time, they're going to burn more fat from, they're going to literally burn more fat because and turn that fat into energy, stored energy. And then it's going to go to the mitochondria, your furnace, your body's furnace. And it's going to start to do the burning processes, which is why you go work out anyway. So that's one of the essential, one of the really good reasons why you work out. So lifestyles, and I really want you to listen to this because I'm going to bring this thing home about stress. Factors such as stress, sleep, and alcohol consumption can also impact muscle and fat balance because a lot of alcohol has a lot of sugar in it. And we already know what the sugar does, and it leads to a lot of inflammation too. Stress and lack of sleep can increase cortisol levels, which can lead to fat storage. While excessive alcohol can inhibit muscle growth too. We will always, we always, we're also going to down the road in this segment address sleep in hopes of helping you understand better and have a deeper understanding how crucial sleep is to the body so that your body can rejuvenate itself. It has to. You have to have that sleep. Remember, everyone's body is unique, and what's most important is maintaining a healthy lifestyle. That includes a a balanced diet, regular physical activity, nutritional meals. So the last thing I want you to do is set yourself up to fail. So don't compare your body's weight to somebody else's because you may not share the same genetics or size, height, and muscle structure. You've got to, I want you from this moment right now to work on you and what you want to be. You want to be a leader in your health and wellness. You do not want to be a follower because if you're a follower, you don't have a mind of your own to think. And then we can't get through the process of rewiring your thought processes because you're going to be easily influenced by everything and everybody because you're a follower. You get what I'm saying? Feel what I'm saying? Yep. So one thing I want you to do is understand losing weight at a slow and steady pace is more sustainable and healthier than attempting to lose weight rapidly. This is because when you lose too quickly, you're more likely to lose muscle and water and other essential nutrients rather than fat. And also, that's when also you're going to lose a lot of elasticity in your skin. And then you're going to have sagging skin. It is normal to lose one, two, to three pounds in a week. That's normal. I would say anything over that might be a little bit excessive. So you don't need to lose a whole lot of weight real fast. Give your body time to catch up with the weight loss. So everything in your body needs to work in unison, and you don't need to put that much pressure on your organs either. Moreover, losing weight gradually allows your body to adjust to the new changes because that's important. And so we want to keep in mind about this loose skin, and we want to promote the development of healthy habits that can help you maintain your weight loss in the long term because a lot of times when people lose weight too fast they gain it all back and then when you gain it back then it's more fat that you're gaining back because at that point you lost the weight too fast now your body's in the fat burnt the fat storage process is trying to store 
fat because they think that something your body thinks something is wrong. In addition to regular physical activity, it's also recommended to eat a balanced diet that is a variety of foods from all food groups. Go and listen to the previous podcast when I'm talking about food. This ensures that you're getting all the necessary nutrients your body needs to function properly. And as I also mentioned, we're also doing the weight, the, the app itself. And this app is to is geared at keeping you healthy and having you successful in your weight loss journey so you don't just go back and gain it all back. It's going to teach you how to speak to your body in a way in a a personal way, a scientific way that you understand your body. That's what this segment is about. It's designed to break down how to help with successful weight loss by habit change, becoming more intentional about positive lifestyle change. Ultimately, the goal is to create the habit, and this becomes a daily way of life for you. And we're getting to that. So we're going to take a deep dive into every one of these top one through seven, these topics that I just discussed. Why? Because it's important to you to understand the science of your body. So now we're moving into the science segment and what has been studied and entered into as clinical papers as to how the human body works based on the efficacy of science. And this is real. Trust me, very well researched. The science is where we are at and stress in the body. That's number one. I'm sorry, we want to talk about the stress and what happens to your body when it's in a constant state of stress. Remember, we started, when we started, we started at the fundamentals of weight loss. And that's everything we talked about till right now. And the stress being a barrier to healthy weight loss. Stress is a barrier when it comes down to wanting to lose weight. Now, I'm going to break it down to you through science. And I want you to remember this and I want you to have your aha moment today, right now. So you'd be like, I didn't know I was doing all that to my body. Yes, you have been. (laughs) So let's get to it. This is a, this when I'm through today, you're going to understand stretch, stress management plays a critical role in weight loss and that you need to be able to control your stress. And I'm going to show you how stress can have several effects on the body including the digestive system. When you are stressed, your body goes into fight or flight mode. This is a primitive response developed by our ancestors to protect them from predators and other threats. In this mode, your body perceives a threat and diverts it into a resource and energy to face that threat. And let me break this down. This includes slowing down or temporarily shutting down processes that are not immediately essential to your body, such as digestion, so that it can focus on survival. When this, when, when you're in this fight or flight stage in, in, in your processes, in your body, and you don't, you're not sure if you should stay and fight or if you should run away. When this happens, the body releases stress hormones such as cortisol and adrenaline. These hormones right here slow down the digestive process As the blood flow is diverted away from the digestive tract to other parts of the body like muscles. This is meant to prepare the body to either face the threat, that's the fight, or escape the threat, the flight. And this is referred to as fight or flight in the human stress response. It's really deep. Your gastrointestinal problems can be brought on by constant state of stress. And I did a segment on the three brain, the three brains. You need to go and listen to that because it even goes further and explains this process to you. The slowing down of the digestive process can lead to a variety of digestive issues, including decreased nutrient absorption, decreased enzyme production. That's you're going to be in the bathroom, be in the bathroom, be in the bathroom, okay? Changes in gut bacteria, and that's a bad one. Increased inflammation and permeability of the gut lining, that's a horrible one. If you're frequently stressed and your body is often in this fight or flight state, these digestive issues can become chronic and it can come and it can actually lead to more serious conditions like irritable bowel syndrome, stomach ulcers, acid reflux, and you don't want to go through that. So the most important part is when we get to part three, which we're coming to, we're not there yet, and that's the rewiring so that you can understand how to deal with stress. Another big issue, sleep. 
Let's talk about the science of sleep. There's several reasons why a person might have trouble sleeping, which is considered insomnia, including stress and anxiety, worries, stress, depression, and anxiety can interfere with sleep. That's a big one. That's a real, real big one. Poor, a poor sleep environment. You can be in a noisy environment. The, you, you, the lights are too bright. You know, the lights are not turned down. You should be sleeping in a room full of darkness, really and truly. Or you're in an uncomfortable bed and, and that can prevent a good night's sleep. You're tossing and turning, tossing and turning. You need to be in a good bed where you can just sink into sleep. If you can't sleep, uh, sink into sleep. We have our CBN, CBD uh, gummies. And those, that's our rock a baby sleep. <laughs> and that's on the auspiciouswellness.com website. And they give you a rock a baby sleep. And I'm really, really trying to tell you they really, really work. And then we have the energy gummies. And those are our pineapple energy gummies. And those are with CBG and CBD. We have some really, really great formulations for you. I'm telling you, I've, we've gone all out to get this thing together. So another thing, too, is lifestyle factors. Drinking too much freaking alcohol, too much caffeine, too much nicotine, or heavy meals close to bedtime can interfere with your sleep. You should not be going to sleep on a full stomach because it's just only going to lead to weight gain. I trust, and it's going to end up being lots of visceral fat all around your stomach because your body is not digesting like it should. And if you're consuming too much alcohol, you're definitely going to be putting on weight. And sometimes some people... They do not do very well when they drink a lot of caffeine. They're very, very nervous. And I don't know anybody that thinks nicotine is healthy for the body. It's a habit that needs to be broken. It really is. Another issue, too, because some people, it's time for them to go to sleep, and they up smoking cigarettes, up smoking, and they should be sleeping. Or they just say, oh, before I go to sleep, I need to have a smoke. Well, that nicotine is going to keep you from just getting into a really good night's sleep. You've got to look at that. Another thing, too, is irregular sleep schedules. You should try to go to sleep around the same time every night if possible because then you'll have your circadian rhythm and you're going to bed and waking up at different times. It can disrupt your body's internal clock and affect your sleep quality, which is your circadian rhythm. And if that one is off, then you're really, really not going to sleep right. You're waking up through the night. You know what I'm saying? All these things that I'm telling you, are very, very important because if you're waking up through the night, your body doesn't have time to heal itself. Your body doesn't have time to go into the mode of healing, to go into the mode of re-energizing itself. It doesn't have the ability to be able to do that. That's bad for your organs. If you don't get enough sleep, it can kind of mess up your kidneys. You should talk to your doctor about that. There's physical health conditions, various medical conditions, such as chronic pain, heart disease, thyroid problems. And trust and believe me, a thyroid will keep you up all night. I'm a living witness. I know I am in remission and thank God I am in remission. But the thyroid, I used to be up all night long and I had gotten to the point that my kidneys were shutting down because I wasn't getting any sleep. And it's just, I just was up all night. I didn't even understand. It went on for a whole summer. And by the time I looked around, I was like a size eight and I looked like I was on drugs, but I wasn't doing anything. I was sick and I didn't know I was sick and I was having rapid weight loss. It was terrible. Another thing too, asthma and gastrointestinal disorders can interfere with sleep. Because if your stomach is hurting, you have Crohn's disease and things like that, you're not going to be able to go to sleep. So you definitely have to go see your doctor. Okay. And so sleep disorders, conditions like insomnia, sleep apnea, restless leg syndrome, narcolepsy can result in poor sleep. Medications, certain medicines like anti, like well, really antidepressants, cord, uh, corticosteroids, high blood pressure medication, and some contraceptives can also impact sleep. And so if you're on any of those and you're not sleeping, go talk to your doctor. Okay. That. I'm not sleeping. Can you check me? Get checked. The lack of physical activity, regular physical activity can help you fall asleep faster and enjoy a deeper sleep. Lack of it can interfere with sleep. So you, your body needs to be able to release 
and it needs to be able to rejuvenate itself. And part of that is with the physical activity, exercise, and then getting into a healthy sleep. And that's your circadian rhythm. That's very true that you need to be able to do that. And also, as we get older and we're aging and aging process, changes in sleep patterns are normal. But disturbed sleep and waking up tired are not a normal part of aging. That's, again, a time for you to see your doctor because if you can't sleep and you're waking up extremely tired, go and have your blood blood work done to be sure something else is not going on. It's very important that you do this. Now, this one, mothers, fathers, kids, whoever's listening, check into this one. Overuse of electronic devices. The blue light emitted by phones, tablets, computers, and TV can interfere with the production of melatonin, a hormone that regulates sleep. If you're having trouble sleeping and you're up all night playing with the games and up all night watching TV, you should be doing that by a certain time. Everything should be turned off. Everything. Like say, for instance, it's 10 o'clock and you know you got to get up at 7 o'clock. Turn off everything. Go to sleep. That's what you need to do. Lay there, rest, meditate, pray. You know what I'm saying? Just pray. Just just in that, that silent space where your body's resting and try to go to sleep. That's important because if you are having trouble sleeping, it's important to identify any underlying causes and address them. It may also be beneficial to maintain a regular sleep schedule. Trust and believe me, that's really important. Creating a restful environment. And incorporating relaxing activities into your bedtime routine is important too. You know what I'm saying? Now check this out. Your husband and wife, right? And you're laying in bed. One one person get on one end of the bed and the other person stays at the opposite end. You grab his feet, she grab your feet, or you grab each other's feet, your partner, however it is. You, You turn around and grab each other's feet. And relax and just turn around and massage. Get some oil, massage them. Both of you doing it at the same time and just kind of talking lights up. I'm telling you, that's a beautiful thing. (laughs) That's something me and my husband do do. So if sleep problems persist, you might necessarily need to consult a healthcare provider. Okay? So, and the reason why is because I want to talk to you about what happens when our bodies don't get enough sleep. When we don't get enough sleep, several things can happen to your body. And we're still in the science, and that's including cognitive impairment. Lack of sleep can affect your concentration, problem-solving skills, and your memory. It can make you more prone to accidents and mistakes because it's harder to concentrate and it's harder to actually have your thought processes be clear because you're tired. And when you're tired, you're grumpy. When you're tired, you can't think straight. When you're tired, you just want to be left alone. So why not get the sleep that you need? And also when you're, now I know this is me all day long. When I don't get enough sleep, I am so angry because I'm tired. (laughs) So sleep deprivation can make you more irritable, anxious, or depressed. It can also decrease your motivation, increase your risk of developing mental health disorders when you don't get enough sleep. Weakened immune system during sleep, your immune system produces protective substances like cyclotines, like uh, cycle, uh, cyclotines and antibodies. Lack of sleep can weaken your immune system, making you more susceptible to infections. And we all know that, okay? So a lot of people will turn around and say, my resistance was down. I wasn't getting enough sleep. That's because you're, that's, that's part of it. That's because your immune system is weak and it's more susceptible to colds, viruses, and things of that nature because it can't fight things off because your body is not at its normal production of health. It can't be. It's impossible when you don't get enough sleep. So, and this is something I really want you to understand when you don't get enough sleep, you can, you're at an increased risk of chronic conditions. Chronic sleep deprivation can increase your risk of developing conditions that are cardiovascular, obesity, diabetes, and even some types of cancer. You need to really listen to what I'm saying. And I'm not just saying it. I'm very serious about that. And you also deal with the hormonal imbalance because sleep helps regulate hormones that control appetite, ghrelin, and leptin. You, because if you don't get enough sleep, then those hormones are not going to work properly. 
And then you're going to want to sleep. You're going to be up at night eating and, and going to bed, eating and sleeping, even up and down. I want another snack. I, let me this. If you know what I'm talking about, those of you are, that are out there listening, okay, to me. And so the Graylin and leptin are responsible for growth as well. And stress, lack of sleep can disrupt these hormones. Stress and that lack of sleep can totally disrupt those two hormones, leading to a weight gain and increased stress levels. Because you're not going to deal with everything the same. If you have enough uh, sleep and and you're getting to a stressful situation, if you have enough sleep, you're going to be more mild about how you deal with it and you're going to think it through. And then if you if you don't get enough sleep, you're just going to make a rash decision and see where it lands. And that's not how you want to live your life. You might make the worst decision. You might come up with the worst decision that you ever made in your life and really regret it because you are working on no sleep. Okay. And also research shows a link between insufficient sleep and obesity. Lack of sleep may disrupt the balance of the hormones that control hunger and satiety that I was just talking about. So you got to get enough sleep. Lack of sleep can interfere with your body's hunger hormones and can lead to weight gain. Try to aim for seven to nine hours of sleep per night, depending upon you want to get a little bit more if you're aging, because some people need that nine hours. I need six hours. You know, everybody's not the same, as I said earlier. And so those are some of the things that I want you to think about when you're not getting enough sleep, because the last thing that you want to do is send your body into overdrive. That's the last thing. Another thing I want to talk to you about is water dehydration, because that is really bad for you. And I'm going to talk about that because a lot of people really just don't drink enough water. They'll drink juice, soda. That's not going to lead to hydrating your body the way it needs to. One of the first signs of dehydration is feeling a thirst and dryness in your mouth. Your mouth will feel dry and sticky. You will have decreased urine output. And why am I talking about this? You're about to find out. When the body is dehydrated, the kidneys try to conserve water by reducing urine output. This this can lead to your urine being really, really dark. If you know that your urine is really dark when you're using the washroom, you turn go drink some water and drink a whole bunch of it because you need to be able to do that. Fatigue or lethargy, water is essential for energy production. So when the body's dehydrated, it can result in t- in feeling of tiredness and you can become lethargic. Those are some of the things that happen to you. So imagine if you're really, so do you imagine if you don't have enough water, are you going to be as active? No, you're not. It's impossible. If you can also become dizzy or lightheaded. Dehydration can cause low blood pressure, leading to dizziness, lightheadedness, especially when you stand up too quickly. Also, your skin becomes very dry. Water helps to keep the skin hydrated and elasticity. So if you're losing elasticity, then your skin is going to start to sag. Without enough water, the skin can become dry, flaky, and more prone to wrinkling. And also, you can experience a rapid heartbeat and breathing. breathing very rapidly, I must say. Dehydration can cause the heart and lungs to work harder, resulting in rapid heartbeat and breathing. Another thing how we know sometimes people are really dehydrated, their eyes are sunken in and their skin is tinting. In severe cases of dehydration, the eyes, they appear very sunken in and the skin may stay tinted when pinched and released. So that's something for you also. And you become confused and irritable. Because dehydration can affect the brain and lead to confusion and irritability and delirium in extreme cases. You know how some people, when they've been in a boat and they think they see land and they really don't see land, they become, they, they become that's part of the delirium. Because your body needs, your brain, it actually needs water. It needs hydration. Okay, you can go into shock or organ failure. In most severe cases, dehydration can lead to shock organ failure as the body cell require water to function. Also, you can become constipated. So if you're always constipated, how do you expect to lose any weight? Water aids in digestion. It helps keep the stool soft. And the lack of water can lead to constipation. And a lot of times, too, um, if you're not drinking a lot of water, 
and you need to go to the bathroom and you're squeezing it out and your stools are hard, that can lead to diverticulitis because you don't want to have that. And then next thing you know, you're inflamed and they got to cut out, you know, you got to start cutting things out to be able to, so you can go to the bathroom the white way because your food won't process the way it's supposed to. Go talk to your doctor about that. I'm telling you those, and that's very painful is when you go to, when you end up with diverticulitis, that's very, 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 very painful. And so if you're regularly feeling these symptoms, you may not be getting enough water. However, these symptoms can also be signs of other medical conditions. So you really, really, really need to go talk to your doctor, make an appointment. So I know how you're saying, well, how much water am I supposed to drink? So I'm going to give you the equation. Divide the body's weight by two. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you start dividing that. Two divide, 200 divided by two is two, 100, which is half the weight. Divide that 100 by what size of bottle or glass of water you're going to drink. So let's say, example, you you have um, a 16-ounce uh, bottle of water. You would divide the 100 by 16, and that, six, that 16 will give you six and one-fourth bottles of 16 ounce bottles. So you got to drink six and one fourth bottles until your body gets hydrated. So you're drinking from a 24 ounce tumbler and you weigh 310 pounds. You would divide the weight by two, which is 155 pounds, then divide the 155 by 24 ounces. The size of the tumbler you are drinking from, that rounds out to be six 24 ounce tumblers. You do need that amount of water. But now let me say this to you too. And you could, you could do a little bit less if you need to, okay? If you're urinating too, too much, do a little bit less. It's equally important to not drink excessive amounts of water without also replenishing the electrolytes. That's very dangerous as it can lead to water intoxication or hyponatremia, which is very dangerous for the brain. It's a condition where sodium levels in the body are dangerously low. Always listen to your body and drink when you're thirsty. That's important. Also, you need to stay active. Live in a sedentary lifestyle. Sitting all the time or being physically inactive can have several negative impacts on your health. So you want to stay, you want to keep that movement going as much as you can because if you don't use it, you'll lose it. We all know that. Okay. And weight gain and obesity. Physical inactivity can lead to weight gain and obesity since you're not burning as many calories as you are consuming. The worst one is cardiovascular disease. Lack of exercise can increase the risk of heart disease such as high blood pressure, stroke, and heart attack. Physical activity helps to improve heart health by reducing cholesterol levels and maintaining blood pressure. Diabetes, a sedentary lifestyle, can increase the risk of type 2 diabetes as regular physical activity can help regulate blood sugar levels. It's very important. And also sitting or lying down for prolonged periods can lead to back pain and other musculoskeletal problems. It can also lead to weaker bones, osteoporosis, and reduce muscle mass and strength. And that's when a person gets up and they're super, super stressed. They're super, 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 super stiff. And that's because they're starting to develop musculoskeletal problems because of their inactivity. And so also, now this is the killer, mental health issues. Physical activity has been shown to help with mental health issues like anxiety and depression. A sedentary lifestyle can therefore increase the risk of these conditions. And you are definitely reducing your lifespan at this point because several studies have found that a sedentary lifestyle is associated with a higher risk of premature death because as humans, we weren't meant to sit around all day. We weren't meant to do that. We're meant to be mobile. We're meant to move. And also with the decreased co- your decreased cognitive functions, also research has been linked to physical activity with a higher risk of dementia and decreased cognitive functions. Now, I didn't say go out there and run around the block every day. Just take you a walk, take a stroll. If, you're, if your lifestyle is somewhat restricted, try to do the things that you think that you can do. Like some seniors will go get in the pool and they'll do exercise in the pool because it won't be as harsh on their joints as if they were walking or jumping up and down because the water softens all of that. Okay. Now let's get to the best part of this segment. 
because we're winding down, rewiring the toolkit. Now let's get to an actionable habit change. When I'm talking about rewiring, I'm talking about rewiring how we think. When I say rewiring how you think by creating measurable habit change, that is actually obtainable. Removing, okay, restrictive, restrictive, like say for instance, someone said, okay, I'm going to go on this diet and I can only have a thousand calories a day. Well, that's too restrictive. Okay, so removing restrictive things from our thought process and adding things that are doable is most important. The first step in doing that is to identify self-defeating behaviors right now. And how we do that, identifying your triggers. That's the most important thing. What makes you do this thing? What was going on with me when I'm doing this? For instance, when your phone rings, you answer. When your alarm goes off in the morning, what do you do? You turn it off. These are impulses or cues that trigger an action. If you know something happened and it's, now listen to this. Let me go back over this. I don't want to say it too fast. The telephone rings, you answer it. Alarm goes off in the morning. You automatically reach over there and turn off that alarm. These are impulses. The cue is that the phone rang. And that's the, okay, so the impulse is the trigger of an action. And that action is to turn the alarm off. That that impulse is the cue that's going to trigger, turn it, I heard the alarm, turn it off. The phone rang, I need to, I need to answer it. Okay. And so this is, this is how our brain thinks. If, and it, it becomes a habit. If you know something happens and it's stressful, instead of eating, go for a walk, get away from food, go to the gym, work through it, read a book, drink water, brew some tea, do whatever you think that you can do to stop you from going to the refrigerator because you don't want it to to be eating like feel good eating. And that becomes your go-to when you're stressed. Get an accountability buddy who needs a friend. And you will hold each other accountable. Get a pet. Now, this is a big one. Getting a a dog. Getting a cat. Getting a pet. Because a pet pet can pour into you for emotional support. They can be your emotional support buddy. A shelter animal can really bring positive habit change. They bring love, understanding, and positive habits. Companionship. And the big word, responsibility, going for walks with your new companion, becoming more active, letting your new pet out, playing with your dog, taking your dog, your cat places. Every pet needs the love. And also the love you're going to receive back in return is really worth it. You'll find that your stress levels are reduced when playing with pets. A lot of people will say, my dog saved my life. This is because our relationship with cats and dogs or other pets that show us affection can increase the body's production of hormones associated with happiness, including serotonin and oxytocin. Those are two hormones that are linked to love and relationships. What I'm asking you to do is become a disruptor in your life with your bad habits that trigger your bad cues that turn around and trigger bad habits. And I want you to replace this. Let's go back now one more time. Listen to what I just said. I want you to become disruptive with your triggers and cues and replace the bad habit with good proactive habits. That's rewiring. When you're you're rewiring your mind with positive actions, keep doing this, working on positive responses to stress. Watch the stress go down because you've developed a habit to counteract the stress while becoming more actionable in your life. You will now start to experience a sense of relief. You'll still, you won't be as stressed all the time. Let go of some of the pent up anxiety and stress. Don't let stress overcome you. Work through it one day at a time, one day at a time until you can figure out what it is that you want to do to help you to remove this stress. So I'm going to give you some examples of rewiring. You stressed out, you run to the fridge. You get a high calorie sugary drink, a soda, an artificially sweetened drink. You just need something to show that you're consuming, that you need something to make you feel good. Don't consume the soda anymore. Don't even buy any. You know, buy some water and drink the water when you're stressed. Say, for instance, if you decide, okay, I need to taste something, boil some tea and drink the tea. Don't put any sugar in it. 
maybe some honey. I just usually drink my tea with nothing but tea. Okay, you go. You want to go to the refrigerator every time you stress. You replace the chips with nutrient dense foods. Nutrient dense foods are high in nutrients but low in calories and contain vitamins, minerals, complex carbohydrates, lean protein, and healthy fats. Here are some examples of nutrient dense foods: kale, water based foods like grapes, celery, broccoli, nuts, greens, green vegetables, seeds like pumpkin seeds. Whole grains like quinoa, lentils, beans, eggs. Okay, let me give you an example. And I'm going to going to have to do this on the Auspicious Wellness TV show to show what I mean. Get your, I'm going to show people how to do food prep in a really great way so that people can, you know, get this habit down packed. So you go and get your containers. You wash and clean all the food when you're prepping. So you got your grapes. Okay, you got your strawberries, you got your apples, you got your pineapples, you got a fresh pineapple. You go take the fresh pineapple and cut it up. Then you want to turn around and put that in the freezer. You want to turn around and get another container and cut up your strawberries. You put that refrigerator. You want to get another container and cut up your oranges. And you put that in a different container. So then you get your, you go ahead and you get your, so I'm going to, we're going to go with this one. So then you turn around and you're going to bake some chicken and you're going to you're going to season it really nicely and you're going to put it in the oven and you're going to let it cook slow. You turn around, you get the chicken, you let the chicken sit cool down for a little while and you go take the chicken, tear it all apart, put it in a container. OK, so then you're going to get your little bitty seeds. You're going to get your you turn around, and get your raspberries, clean those and put them in a different container. Then you turn around, you got a little cheese on the side, you got your vinaigrette, and then you decide you got your nuts, get you some pecans, and then you're going to turn around, get you some blue cheese, and then you're going to turn around and be like, wow, you really literally have some whole meals. So you turn around and make a salad the first day, and you put the chicken in it the first day. So you turn around and do that. Then you turned around, and you food prepped, and you got some spinach. So then you're going to, it's morning time. So you need some protein. Okay. And you need some water-based protein. So then we go and we do the eggs. We take the chicken and then we take the spinach and we put that all together, beat it all up and make an omelet with it. Well, now you have a whole high protein breakfast. It doesn't have to be bland. It can be good as you want it to be. Okay. And these are some of the things that I'm going to be demonstrating on the Auspicious Wellness TV show. You know, we have a TV show on Amazon, Roku, and Apple TV. If you have a Roku TV, just download the channel and you get a chance to bring me into your world live kind of sort of, you know what I'm saying? You can stream, we're on the streaming platforms and you can stream us, you know what I'm saying? And, and so when it comes, so when it comes down to it, you're not mad. You're not mad at the prep work. You start to enjoy it. You know what I'm saying? And you're already there and you're eating veggies instead of potato chips. You're flushing your system. You're eating energy-based food because the foods that I just told you, those are slow energy burns. Okay? That means you don't get hungry as fast. And it keeps you from getting hungry and snacking. And it helps to be proactive in the success that you set yourself up to win. I just gave you a whole little scenario of what you can actually do. Okay, so say for instance, now you've got a salmon and you put it in the oven and you baked it. Boy, do I have, I'm telling you, I got a recipe for break uh, for baked salmon that just, ooh wee. <laughs> so then you turn around and you have some salmon and you have that in the refrigerator and you don't tow that all apart. You, you know what I'm saying? So you tow it all apart. Then you turn around and you take all of the salad and instead of using the chicken, then you turn around and you use the salmon and you get some chickpeas and you put the chickpeas in there. You know what I'm saying? And maybe a little bit of quinoa, put a little bit of that in there. Then you got a super, super, super high protein dinner or lunch. Okay. With omega-3, 6, and 9 essential fatty acids. Oh, baby, I can ramble this thing all day. And what I want you to do, some people say, I, I have a, a protein stack bar. Avoid ultra-processed power bars and, and packaged garbage. Snacks high in nutrient and low in calories can help you feel, I'm telling you, they make you feel really, really good. Really good. And, and that's serious. It makes you feel like you're doing something, you're being proactive, and you're not overindulging, and you're more satisfied with what you're doing with your life. Choose foods like fruits, berries, dries, nuts, and nuts. These foods will help your body 
with the necessary nutrients while helping you maintain a healthy weight and reduce overall snacking. And when you do want a snack, you're going to go for something healthy. Just don't even buy the regular junk that you buy. Stop buying it. Because energy-based food, also known as energy-yielding foods, provide the body with the energy to perform the task after digestion. It gives you energy because you learn your body's learning how to burn the calories off. Instead of storing the fat, it's burning the fat as energy. These foods are rich in carbohydrates and carbohydrates and fats, which is the body's primary source of energy. You get me? You get where I'm trying to take you? Carbohydrates, the body's preferred fuel. Carbs are quickly converted to glucose for energy. Eating a snack of carbs before exercise can provide quick energy, while eating proteins along with carbs can provide long-lasting energy. And fat contains more than twice as much energy as carbohydrates or proteins per gram. Most fat is in the form of triglycerides, which are released into the bloodstream for energy. You understand? Okay, so let's look at this. You're putting your body first with nourishing foods that are designed to help you with a healthier you. Losing weight, replacing the bad habits with good habits through transformation. Now, are we replacing bad habits? But what we're doing is we're keeping it simple because habits that are hard to retain can lead to self-defeating behaviors. Everything I just gave you is easy, breezy. It's easy for you to do it, and it's not that hard. And then instead of instead of uh, frying the eggs with uh, grease, try olive oil. When we think long term, the long term goal of getting healthier is losing weight, but creating a positive lifestyle change leading to positive transformation is so rewarding. And it builds self-esteem also with a sense of self-belief in yourself and our brain reward center of accomplishment is a natural high. So you know how they have the runner's high? That's the natural high that you're going to, to experience. So now we are releasing hormones associated with happiness, such as dopamine, and the hormone responsible for making us feel good. And if we can achieve the our body shape or weight goal, this hormone will produce and it will be produced for us in greater quantities. Serotonin, which can help reduce the symptom of depression. Endorphins, which are related to happiness, can help to reduce physical pain or symptoms of injury in our muscles due to its chemical properties being similar to morphine, which is used for pain relief. What I'm doing is explaining the reward of habit change with science, with the science of the body. That's what I'm doing. And guess what? <laughs> Something to help you get started. I've created a link in the platform you're listening to me on. I've included a link that says get your free checklist on losing weight and, t- and a tasty free recipe. I really, really put a recipe in there too. So I want you to stay up to date with me. Sign up to the podcast mailing uh, list and you'll receive your freebie. And also emails letting you know the next podcast or TV segment has been released or a new product. Any of all of those things are what you're going to be getting. So it's well worth it. And it's just something that we all need in our life. I want to be on this journey with you. I want to help you take the journey. And I want you to also bask in your wellness. That's very, very important. So that's what I have for you today. We've been, I've been talking to exactly 58 minutes <laughs> because I missed you. And I wanted to give you something worthwhile. Worth, I wanted to give you something worthwhile also. So, you know, guys, I get tongue-tied sometimes, but I know what I'm trying to say. And I get to it. Um, so that's one of my habit changes, defeating being tongue-tied. Something that I had as a child, and I just had to overcome it and work and work and work. Anything you set your mind to do, you will do it as long as you try hard with the right for the right reasons and doing things the right way. So until that time, I'm going to let you know I'm thinking about you. I'm going to release you on a healthy boat today. I want to thank my listeners all over the listening to me. I'm so happy to be back, back in the seat with you, and I'm hoping to bring you something extra rewarding again next week. So with that being said, until next time, I want you to put yourself first. I want you to tell yourself, I can get to the top of the mountain, and I'll be able to look down and look back and see my whole journey on the way up the mountain that I'm on top of now. 
knowing that you're there, you're doing what you need to do. And not only are you doing what you need to do, you're making a lifestyle change for your family. And you're showing them what health really feels like, looks like. And it's all about real good health and prevention. And so these are the steps that I want you to take. And that's going to be your takeaway today. You are, you can, and you will, and you're enough. And you can do this. With that being said, I'm going to talk to you later. And thank you so much for tuning in. And I'll see you next time. I hope to bring you something equally as informing next week. And I'm signing out. This is your host, Deborah Smith Torrance of the Auspicious Wellness Optimal Wellness Podcast. And guess what? I'm about to get out of this seat. I'm vacating it and I am out of here.